Hello, my name is Randy Yardley and I'm representing the Beaver FFA chapter. We are helping and sponsoring the program called For Kids Sake. And the video you've just watched has a lot of important messages on it. The one message we would like to get across to you today is that farming accidents happen all the time right here in Beaver County. If you're not from a farm family, you know someone who is, chances are that you will visit a farm with someone you know. Joe White is a businessman from Beaver. Seven years ago, while he was helping his father-in-law on the farm, his son was involved in a serious accident which almost cost him his life. He'll tell you about his son's accident. Well, 1984, my father-in-law and I uh, were using a small Ford tractor with a blade on the back to clean some irrigation ditches in the pasture directly behind our homes. And my four-year-old son, Ryan, wanted to ride on the tractor with me and I told him that it wouldn't be a good idea, that it probably wouldn't be safe. I wouldn't be able to watch him and operate the tractor at the same time. So I assumed that he was in the house or somewhere in the yard inside the fence and my father-in-law and I proceeded to clean these ditches and to re them. And as I uh, was backing up and lowering the scraper on the rear end of the tractor. Uh, my father-in-law was standing behind the tractor and was guiding the scraper to put it in the ditch and we needed some additional weight so he was going to ride on the on the blade to give us some additional weight to make a new cut. And I was looking over my right shoulder backing up watching my father-in-law so that I wouldn't injure him with the, the blade and I let the blade down and he got on the blade and I started forward and all of a sudden I, I had gone three or four feet and the tractor came to a stop. It, it felt like it was on something. It wouldn't go forward. And I put in the clutch and I looked down to my left to see uh, my four-year-old son pinned under the left rear wheel of the tractor. And I was totally surprised. I had no idea where he had come from, so I immediately stopped the tractor and rolled it back off of him. The, it, apparently, he had come up to the side of the tractor while I was backing up, and I didn't see him. And I couldn't hear him say anything over the noise of the motor. And so when I had gone forward, it knocked him down, and the wheel, of the the wheel rolled up his right arm, and rolled on to the right side of his skull and it, the motion of the wheel tore a big patch of hair and scalp off from the side of his head. And anyway, we, we got him out from under the tractor and we took him to the emergency room in the hospital and Dr. Smith uh, thought that he had a broken arm and a fractured skull and so they life flighted him to uh, Primary Children's Hospital in Salt Lake City. And it's nothing short of a miracle that he uh, is alive today and is not suffering any ill side effect from uh, this accident. We're very fortunate. I think that because the tractor was small, much as this one is, and we were on soft, uh, spongy pasture ground, that there was enough give there that it didn't cause serious injury and crush his skull. And so, I would hope that other people in these same kinds of circumstances can learn from my experience in that you can never be too careful or too cautious around farm equipment and farm machinery, especially where a little child may be on the premises. And uh, I'm fortunate that there is a happy ending to this story and that it turned out as well as it did. Several years ago, Gibby Arden was involved in an accident on his farm involving livestock. He'll take a minute and tell you about his accident. Well, uh, it seems like when you're in the livestock business, uh, cattle and horses are unpredictable. And you just cannot predict how they're going to react to certain situations. And it does cause a lot of accidents. Some of them can be avoided. And some of them, uh, one time I was uh, tattooing a and a tattoo a baby calf. And uh, I threw the calf down and sat on it, was tattooing it. And mother cow was right there, and she just jumped on top of me and just about killed me. Broke four ribs, and, and uh, 
She trumped my face, cut my ear half off, and uh, she would have killed me, I'm sure, if my hired men hadn't been there to get her off. And I was a long time recovering from that. Uh, I, should, I didn't know the cow was that mean. She hadn't been that mean before. But we should have locked her away from the calf while we were working on it and had the calf in a separate pen. And then uh, I had an old mare that uh, my kids had ridden a lot, and uh, I thought she was just as gentle as a kid. And this one afternoon, my kids wanted to go for a horseback ride, and I wanted to take them, and this old mare had not been ridden all summer. And uh, so I saddled her up, and I thought she'd be fine. I put a saddle on her, and. I cinched her pretty tight. I guess I cinched her tighter than I should have done. But she started reeling backwards, and I thought, oh, she'll be okay. So I put my little girl on her, and then she just started having a fit. And she lunged forward and threw my little girl against the barn and kind of lunged again and fell right, my little boy was standing by the barn and she fell right on him and knocked all the wind right out of him and knocked him out. He was unconscious and I thought he was dead. And I'm sure he would have been dead, but I gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I figured I had to get him to the hospital, but I knew I had to get him breathing first of all. And I've never had any practice or experience in giving this mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but I can see that everybody really needs to know how to do that and to do it. So I just knew that I had to get him breathing, so I put my mouth right over his, and <clears throat> I would breathe him in the pickup, and I'd drive a little ways. I was coming to the hospital. I was about two miles out of town, and I'd drive a little ways, and then I'd stop and give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and drive a little ways further and give it to him again. I'd gone about halfway and he kind of vomited and then he started breathing a little bit. But he hadn't been breathing until then. And the doctor said if I hadn't given him that mouth to mouth resuscitation that he never would have lived. And they rushed him to the primary children's hospital and we took him on life flight and thought they were worried for fear he might have brain damage. But uh, he got over it in a couple of days and didn't have any brain damage and we were extremely thankful. It's one of those things that's unpredictable. I didn't expect it to happen, didn't think it ever would happen, but it did. And it was uh, just about, uh, took the life of my only son, and I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was scary and really, uh, it was really the toughest situation I've ever faced in my whole life. Twelve years ago, Ora Hoffmans was working on his farm on his tractor with his son while they were building a new fence with his post hole digger. He was caught in the PTO and wrapped up. He'll take a few minutes to tell you about his Twelve years ago, on the fifth of next month, I decided to build a new fence. So I went down and got my tractor, my post hole digger, and I started to dig the holes. Well, I didn't have any coat on. It was it was nice, and all of a sudden it started to rain. So I got up. I went over and got my coat and put it on. And not knowing that my coat had holes in it, but you, my wife had told me not to wear that, to wear a new one. Why I caught in in the, on the PTO. Someone had left a long boat, which people's got to be aware of, and watch for those things instead of having the the regular pin in it, it just come flash, and I, it uh, grabbed my sleeve. It threw me up on top of the tractor, wound me around the, the PTO line, and my son was with me, and he jumped down and grabbed his knife and he cut me out of it. Well, in the process, I laid in the rain, which the doctor said was a wonderful thing because he said, uh, it, it helped, and uh, they have, they took me to the, the local hospital here. And when they got up there, it, they found out that I had my left shoulder pulled out, and the 
ball on my shoulder was laying on my chest. And I uh, had 13 ribs broke. My lung was punctured. My uh, neck was bleeding off the bed. And they had to send for blood. They couldn't find blood at the last time. Well, the moral of this story is that uh, uh, machinery has no feelings for anybody. And then to, it, it can kill her, it can disable her, whatever it wants to do. People just want to remember that, uh, that I was just one lucky guy. In fact, the doctor told me when I got in Salt Lake, he told my wife, he says, he's got about one chance out of 8,000 to leave. But he says that his vital signs are so good. And he says, I have no worries about it. And that was it. Hi, I'm Cody Erickson, and I'm Beaver's Chapter FFA Vice President. And I'm here to tell you a story about Chet Wiseman. It was a warm spring day in April of 1989, and 11-year-old Chet Wiseman was busy doing what all 11-year-old boys do shooting baskets, playing with his hounds, and petting his horses. It came time to go to his relative's house to do some rototilling. Chet worked up quite a sweat and quite a thirst, so he went into the garage and there on the workbench set a Gatorade bottle full of what appeared to be Gatorade. Without thinking, Chet opened it and took a drink. That split second changed Chet's life forever. You see, in that Gatorade bottle was a deadly pesticide, Carathion. Within 10 minutes, Chet's heart stopped and he quit breathing. He was rushed to the hospital where CPR was administered for 35 minutes. He was then taken by life flight to primary children where he remained in a coma for a year and a half. Now, he still can't walk, talk, eat or drink. He has to be fed by a tube that goes directly into his stomach. The poison and the lack of oxygen to his brain even took away most of his vision. This is just one example of how easily accidents can happen. You would think an 11-year-old would know better than to drink pesticide, wouldn't you? But no one told him that parathion was being stored in a Gatorade bottle. This is why it is very important to never put poisons in any containers other than their own, even if you do label them. Suppose that bottle had been labeled poison. Chet probably wouldn't have touched it, but what about a two, three, or even four-year-old that couldn't read? Always remember, keep poisons in their own containers and well out of the reach of children. These are a few of the accidents that happen all the time on farms in our area. Our hope is that this video will help to prevent accidents in the future in our county.